I'm continuing my series How to Play the Queen's Gambit. I'm looking at some of my favourite games in that opening and showing you a few tips on strategy as well. So what I'm going to do is I'll go through this whole game and then I'll come back and give you a few more details about the opening. So this game is just fantastic. Played by the young Garry Kasparov. He was just 14 years old when he played this one. He's black and he's playing against Elmar Magaramov, who, well, another uh, player from Azerbaijan. He's actually a very respected trainer, um, lives in the United Arab Emirates, Emirates um, as a, a chess trainer now. Now, I played him um, in a tournament in Baku in 1986. Very nice guy. Um, so, it's a Queen's Gambit, declined. And it's this variation that we saw in the last video, the so-called Tartago variation. It's useful for black to flick in this move h6. First of all, we're not really worried about bishop takes knight. Black is happy to get the two bishops. The bishop comes back to h4, and then b6, the so-called Tartago variation. This pawn move h6 can be very useful because later on the king will have an escape square. And b6 that aims to bring the bishop to this long diagonal. White has this very solid pawn center and now takes steps to counter that bishop coming to the long diagonal. Queen b3, this was quite a trendy variation in sort of early 1980s. And here that bishop looks good on the long diagonal. So what white does is ex exchange on f6 now and only then take on d5. So yes, it seems funny to give up the two bishops. There was already an invitation after h6, but the point is that by exchanging now, you can see that pawn on d4, d5 is blocked by the pawn on d4. The bishop is blocked in, whereas if white had exchanged before, the bishop was on c8, if that makes any sense. And also, you can argue that this is slightly compromised, this pawn structure. There are certain weaknesses on the C file. Anyway, that's the rationale behind white's system. And the rook comes to D1 to prevent black breaking free with pawn C5, which is exactly what Kasparov did. <laughs> um, this is, well, yeah, it's. I mean, it's funny because... Kasparov is playing the move that rook d1 and and queen b3 is designed to prevent. But he's giving up a pawn. And typical Kasparov, he's just playing with total energy right from the word go. So he's giving up a pawn. If pawn takes pawn on b6, you can play knight c5 and get compensation with the two bishops. And remember, white's king is still in the middle. That makes a massive difference. So Magaramov decides to just kind of put a lid on things, gives the pawn back, and then plays knight d4. So he's still continuing his strategy of blockading that pawn, hoping to keep that bishop shut in. Now, from a positional point of view, it looks like a very sound strategy. If white has time to play bishop e2 and get castled, play bishop f3, there's going to be pressure on that pawn. But Kasparov comes up with a superb idea, and it looks really strange to give up that beautiful bishop. But here is the point. Well, first of all, if pawn takes... Then the e file is open, and after queen g5, there's already pressure here. Rook e8 is coming. Very dangerous for white. So rook takes d4 looks like the normal move, and from a positional point of view, it looks tremendous for white. But here is the idea. Knight c5 attacking the queen. The queen drops back to d1, and now knight e6. Black can shift the blockade. So the rook goes back, and now d4, and the whole position has flipped on its head. That was taken, 
And now you can see that bishop is just fantastic, screaming down the diagonal. And the e-file is opened, and now a simple move from Kasparov, rook e8, threatening a discovered check. And this is already very, very difficult for white. Possibly, possibly lost, actually. Um, here, well, I mean, what white would like to do is, is close the e-file with bishop e2. But then bishop takes g2, just wrecks the position, knight f4 coming. Um, tremendous attack for black. Uh, if rook e2, then we can take here. Again, all black's pieces looking good. So Magaramov plays pawn to f3. in order after this check to give the king a little sort of bolt hole on f2. But again, Kasparov plays with incredible energy. He realizes that he's got a superb attack here if he just plays bishop takes pawn. Now, if the queen takes, then it's going to fall to a discovered check. Check from the rook, and then knight takes queen. So pawn takes, but now the queen comes out to h4, check. The rook has to interpose. Yeah, let's just see that. If king e2, that's very unfortunate. Knight f4 is a discovered check mate. So queen h4 check, rook f2 forced. And now white is in dreadful trouble. Knight d4 check, bishop b2 blocks. Knight f3, check. All these wonderful pins. Pin and win. Yes, please. So the king has to step to the side. Queen h3, check. Rook g2. Knight h4 hits the rook. It's all threats. It's all threats. So white simply doesn't have any space to breathe. And now rook d8. Well, what a picture of perfection. The knight and queen applying pressure here, and now the rooks in the middle. Black dominates completely. Queen e1, and now rook d3, splendid move. Obviously, if that's taken, then rook takes queen, and otherwise that rook threatening to come across here as well. So queen f2, and now knight f3, beautiful move. So if bishop takes knight, then rook takes. And that knight threatens the rook, it threatens the pawn. Um, I mean, there are some wonderful variations here. I should say that Magaromov played the rook to h1 here. But if, well, let's say knight d5, then rook d1 check. And now mate in one, knight h2, checkmate again using the pin and the rook controls squares on the e-file. That's just one variation. Uh, so you can see that white is completely tied up here. Magaramov played rook h1 and now rook e3. Terrible. So the knight can't be taken. Um, it's it, Yeah, white basically has no moves here. Um, if the knight moves, then rook takes bishop. Magaramov is reduced to just shuffling back and forth. It's not exactly Tugtsvang, um, but well, it's a kind of a Tugtsvang position. Very unusual for a, for a middle game. King h8, just being absolutely sure that there's there are no tricks with rook takes g7. Of course, it's pinned anyway. Rook h1, I can imagine Kasparov was enjoying himself at this moment. And now he goes for the kill. Pawn to b5. That was the final move of the game. Magaramov resigned. So if knight takes pawn, we can take here. And if a3, a5, you just want to play b4. And after this, b4. Let's let's just play a few more moves. The knight retreats. We take the bishop. Take the queen. Take the rook. Okay, I think I think we've seen enough of that one. Um, just a fantastic attacking game from the 14-year-old Gary Kasparov.
played in a training game in Baku in 1977. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So let's go back to the opening and just look at a few details. Well, we arrived at the Queen's Gambit by transposition, and, and that's quite common. So here we have a Queen's Gambit. Of course, black can take there, but this is the Queen's Gambit declined. And bishop g5 is a normal move. You can also play bishop f4 there. e3 and h6. As I said, a very useful move to flick in. And the bishop retreats. And b6, this Tartico variation. Now, after queen b3, actually, um, this variation is reasonable. Probably c5 is actually a little bit risky. Um, and... Later, rook e8 became the, the standard move against this. And only after bishop d3, pawn to c5, and this was played in, in well, many games, actually. Um, and the idea, again, is this pawn sacrifice with knight d7. And white has to watch out for pawn to d4, exploiting that pin. Um, but this was one of the main lines, c6, and then white castle as well. It's a very different situation when the king has actually reached safety. But even so, this uh, was considered to give black a reasonable position. There's actually a beautiful game, Belyavsky against Kramnik. Maybe, maybe I've got... Uh, I'll find time to show that on another occasion. But yeah, that was a very typical way of facing the Tartico variation in the uh, late 70s and early 1980s. Right, more coming your way soon. Thanks for watching.